it's good to see you guys again. It's been a while. Uh, if you don't know, I'm Mike, and this is Del Marpa Backyard, where we do all things barbecue. However, some of you may notice this isn't my normal backyard. Right now, it's just a mess. We bought a new home. We sold our other home, so a new backyard is in the process. And as far as the channel goes and a, a cooking area goes, it's going to go right out there. There used to be a play set out there and we don't have kids that age so I said i'm going to take that down i'm going to utilize that space for a pretty awesome structure to house del marva backyard we're actually getting ready to go for permits and hoa approval so fingers crossed it all gets moving pretty quickly because right now i'm just dealing with a sidewalk with my grills lined up and uh it hasn't been easy to, to really do anything. I've been so busy putting stuff together and doing this and doing that. Moving process is absolutely, if you know anybody's ever done it, you know it's just nuts. But we're most of the way through it now and it's time to start focusing on the channel again. We're gonna cook two massive briskets with some cherry wood and we're gonna start it on the Lone Star Grills offset, but watch how we finish it. This, left hand, my left, your right, biggest brisket I've ever attempted to cook. Let's see how it goes. How do you guys start your fires? Charcoal, kindling, maybe, uh, you know, just some typical fire starters or lighter fluid. This is a normal flow stick burner, so air will go in through the intake, into the fire, get us to the temperature we want to be, and then out through the chimney. I think it's one of the easiest and best ways to do barbecue, but everybody has their own method. Tell us, what do you do? And so when the fire is first starting out, I like to kind of open things up a little more than I know I'm going to need to later, just to kind of get it going and breathing, and, and then I'll slowly close it down. And I want to do that before I get to the temperature I'm looking for. I mean, you could spritz it with water or something, but uh, you know, don't do that. Just, just take it up there and kind of get close to your cooking temperature uh, without going over it. Fifteen pound black Angus. Biggest brisket I've ever tried to cook. These are some monster briskets. In fact, this one, this 20 pounder, 19.58 pounds. This is the biggest brisket I've ever cooked, ever. So yeah, there's that. This one, this is no chump. <laughs> this is a 15 and a half pound brisket. I just, the price was so amazing for here in Delaware at $7.99 a pound. Can you smell this brisket? Tell me if I'm tripping or if it smells off. That's just water. Dude. I don't smell it. Ugh. What? Just yummy. Does it smell off? It says it was packed on 41724. It says 24, huh? That's yeah. not even gonna happen. That must be this sell by date instead. This sell by date instead. And that's when I should have picked up on what was going on. Um, the minute I sliced into the cryovac, something just smelled off. Now, let me back up and give you just a little bit of context about this. This was a planned video and it was shot on Christmas Eve, 
2023. And I was doing it then because on Christmas Day, we were going to take you know, portions of brisket with us to our family's homes and give them out as presents. Now, I've never dealt with spoiled beef that I know of or rotten beef or anything like that when it comes to beef. Now, I think most of us have probably dealt with some, some chicken or, you know, poultry, turkey, whatever. You know, it goes bad a little easier. Um, but I've never really had any bad experiences with beef. And I don't mind the smell of raw meat, but this was different. My wife said that she smelled raw meat, but she's, she doesn't like the smell of raw meat at all. And so, you know, I, I think she was just, she knew that like I did, well, I spent over $250 on the two briskets. And in fact, I spent more than that because I bought some steaks while I was there. I got these briskets from a place that started selling uh, meats, butcher style, um, about a year ago, I think. I had never purchased anything from there. They specialize in seafood. I'm not gonna name the place, it's a local place. They specialize in seafood. And I've always had good experiences with the seafood from there. So I figured I was gonna try the beef. And the reason was because I went in there one time recently and got some seafood and realized they had started selling, I mean, they had brisket laying out in the, in the display cooler. And I was like, wow. And the price was amazing, really amazing. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go grab two briskets and smoke them and we're gonna give them out for Christmas gifts. But the minute I sliced into that cryovac, I knew something was off. And it's really hard to describe. I think the best way I could describe it is like a, like a, a pugnant raw meat odor. It was just off. It, it didn't smell like real nasty, but it, because it didn't smell normal, you know, I had j these just red flags going off. But like I said, uh, at the end of the day, I'm like $300, close to $300 into these briskets and the steaks that I bought and their Christmas gifts. The pressure was on to keep going. And so I decided in my head at that moment, okay, let's just see how this goes. All right, and so what we're doing is we're just cutting off the hard fat sections like this. This is part of the deco over here. And you can see that's solid fat. It's hard fat, it won't render. It is fairly pointless. You don't wanna make a cavity from digging it out. Uh, but it's, you know, it needs to go. And that's just where the two muscles, the point and the flat come together. I like to just shape up the edge. Uh, it has oxidized meat and usually you can see the brown color. Good Lord, this thing is huge. In case you're wondering, I'm using the Victor Knox boning knife. Absolutely love this knife. It's nice and firm and stiff to push through hard fat like that. All right, there we go. I'll adjust that a little bit here and there to make sure we stay rated about 225 to 250. On brisket number one, we're going with some bullshit. o'clock pit is running right at about 225 but now it's time to go ahead and move these briskets from the stick burner the Lone Star grills over to the Rectech RT 680 let's take a look at them whoo my goodness
always the most nerve-wracking moment on an overnight cook. This thing's never let me down, and she's running right at 225, but you just never know. All right, my guess is the big one, 145, the small one, 165 and stuck in the stall. Ooh, 190 there. She's done. Almost. Ooh. That one's definitely done. Close. This one's not tender enough yet. Small one's done. The smaller brisket. Uh, went for, let's see, five, 13 hours. This is our big boy. It is 185 and still tight. So, even though we blew right past the stall, um, we are uh, still, you know, I got another 10, 15 degrees to go on this thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it now. That'll help make sure I get the bark I'm looking for as well as uh, help keep this thing as juicy as possible. All right, 16 hours in. Much softer, we're at 195. Oh, still tight there. 189 down here. All right, the flat is loosened up nicely too. Tight there, 190. Still tight there, 190. Going into slicing these briskets, I was already weirded out just from earlier. But when I started slicing them, I noticed two things. One, they were way, way, way more inconsistent in their tenderness. There was places that were just really hard and places that weren't. Same thing with the moisture. But then I started noticing little spots, and it really bugged me out. And the more I looked at it, the more I found them. And I'd never seen spots like that in my briskets before. And so finally, my wife and I were going back and forth and looking at this thing, and we were just like, you know what? What's wrong? Nothing. It just smelled different. And that was it. And I started really looking at it because at this point I had already decided we weren't going to do anything with this except throw it away. But I wanted to, to see exactly what it was I was the dealing with. with time and look at that catch. Concentration and Garrett Wilson starting to heat up. There's little brown spots in it. Like here. Yeah. Right. Should we Google it? I'm all weirded out now. The more we looked at it, the more problems we saw and the more uncomfortable we were with it. And just simply from a quality, like a good brisket standpoint, it wasn't good. But there's no way I was going to risk making anyone sick. Now, I don't know the science behind this. We cook a brisket to 200 degrees. I don't know that there's anything in the brisket that can hurt anyone. But I know that I'm not putting my name on crappy brisket, if at all possible. And both of these briskets were simply crappy briskets. Originally, I wasn't going to post this video. I just kind of wrote it off as a waste of time, but I was having dinner with my kids one evening there after Christmas, and they said, you need to post it. And I was like, yeah, but I mean, it, it you know, it didn't go the way that I wanted it to. And they was like, that's why we'd watch it. I think it'd be great if you posted it. And it got me thinking, you know, they're right. Like barbecue and like anything in life, it just doesn't always go the way that you plan. And you just have to deal with that. I want you to see it happens to everyone. Something bad, and rather it's barbecue or life, it, it happens, you know? And you just have to keep a calm spirit and make the best decisions that you can. And the best decision I made here was not serving that brisket. Outside of uh, texture and taste, which I know would be way off, uh, just from cutting it, you could tell the texture was just way off. You don't ever want to be known for serving people bad food. And the whole point of making food for others and barbecue is, is to bring people together 
with, you know, great food, not questionable at best food and probably more like spoiled food. If you go online and look, you'll get a lot of different opinions on rather or not the brisket would have been safe. And from my point of view, I think for the most part, we're not talking about as much of a foodborne illness out of this as much as we're talking about quality. The brisket went up, you know, 200 degrees. There's very few things that could survive, few bugs or whatever that could survive enough to, to harm you. If I'm not gonna eat it, I'm not gonna serve it to anyone else. It's just the way that it is for me. Regardless of how much money I put into these briskets and how much time and effort I put into it, uh, giving crappy brisket away at Christmas is not gonna help me be known for great food, especially among my family. Um, so, you know, you gotta draw the line and that's a hard line to draw when like I said, you're close to $300 into this thing. I could have went back to the place I bought them from and, and told them what happened. And they probably would have either gave me more food, maybe comped me some money. It's hard to say because I didn't stop at the moment when I realized they were spoiled. I, I decided I wanted to push through it and see how it went. And so, I, you know, I don't know what they would have said. And to be honest with you, that's not really the way I live my life. Like I don't go out and leave a negative Google review of the minute someone does something I'm not happy with. I learned from it. And you know, I learned that I'm not gonna be buying any more meat and probably to be honest with you, any more seafood from them. I don't know if they did something wrong or who they're getting it from did something wrong or whatever. I know that I bought, you know, two massive briskets and they were both bad. It's not like one was bad and the other wasn't. Like, I don't know how they, you know, handle these briskets uh, wholesale as far as who the business I bought them from, where they got them and all the shipping and all that. But I do know that two briskets of that batch were bad and I'm guessing there were many more that were bad. Uh, great barbecue is about good times. It's about good people. It's about good conversations and great food. These briskets were a long ways away from my standard of great food. I hope you guys got something out of watching this video. If nothing else, watching my decision process as we move through the video, a little bit of behind the scene type stuff here. And to kind of help you along, if you ever get put in a spot like that where, you know, you've put a lot of money into something and rather it's barbecue or anything else in life and you have a tough decision to make, don't let the fact that you spent a lot of money on it force you into making a bad decision. I'm interested in hearing what you guys think about the safety of this brisket. Tell us down in the comments below what you think as far as rather this brisket would have been safe and we would have solely been dealing with a texture and taste thing or were we risking getting someone sick? I'm unsure about that. So I wanna hear what you guys have to say about that. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Like I said, I hope you got something out of this video. Share it with someone that may think this is interesting. If anyone's ever served you bad food, maybe share it with them. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see you on the next video.